Today on Studio One, a perfect example of giving of oneself. Wayne Burlog has been giving blood and platelets for 20 years. We'll tell you why he's making a difference. In the movie Powder, a ghostly white-complected man is introduced to the cruel world that's filled with distrust, hatred, and fear. And getting ready to buy a car, a house, or even rent an apartment? We'll have some tips on what you need to do to start building a good credit history. Now from the University of North Dakota with Scott Seiler and Stephanie Mars, this is Studio One. Hi everyone and welcome to Studio One. Today it's nice to have you along with us. It's, it's a big weekend for the eastern part of North Dakota. We're not talking just because of the weather and the big storm, but also the big football game between NDSU and UND. NFL Films is even up here this weekend doing a documentary on footballs, and one of its featured segments is on rivals, and it'll feature the UND-NDSU rivalry, which has been going on for many years, so it's a big weekend. Exactly, and that's supposed to come out in November time sometime, so that should be a nice treat in mm -hmm. November of next year. Well, coming up today on Studio One, Charlotte Lewis. She'll spend much of her free time taking the beauty of nature and making it into a unique piece of framed art. She'll show us some of those spectacular pieces. And we'll also meet Josie Nelson, a Paralympic hopeful who's training for the women's wheelchair basketball team. But first, today's national news from CNN and news from around the region with Lucy Sivka. Lucy? Thanks, Scott. Residents of the Philippines are being pounded by the punishing winds of the super typhoon Angela. The most powerful storm to hit the country in a decade slammed into Manila with 125 mile, mile an hour winds and torrential rains. At least 12 people have been killed. There's been widespread flooding in some areas and many shoreline homes have been demolished. Authorities are warning residents to take Angela seriously. Let's not try to second guess this typhoon. Be on alert that it's a big one. And that uh, if the president has uh, issued orders on this, it's because I'm very concerned about the safety of our country, people, properties, uh, as well as uh, future. And if we can minimize at this time by our own preparedness, our uh, disaster prevention, I'm not talking about preventing the typhoon, I'm talking about preventing damages, then we would be so much uh, ahead. A man claiming to be armed with a bomb hijacked a school bus Thursday and led police on a low-speed chase to Miami Beach where he was shot and killed. Police identify the man as 42-year-old Catalino Nick Sang of the Dominican Republic. Police said Sang had forced a woman and two children onto the bus at a stop just outside Miami city limits. The bus rammed a police cruiser on an expressway in the early stages of the chase. It later hit another car before the chase ended in gunfire. There was no bomb on the bus, but police quickly dragged Sang off the bus and into a nearby alley where he was shot. The value of our money is something many Americans take for granted. As a result of the attempted separation of Quebec from Canada, the value of the Canadian dollar decreased dramatically. Although the situation is over temporarily, the American economy could be affected. And what will happen to us is that if the Canadian dollar drops in value, then they are more, less likely to come down here and, and actually take part in you know, uh, buying things, entertainment, those type of things. A big factor in whether Canadians travel to the States or not is the exchange rate. If the Canadian dollar is weak, the number of Canadians coming to the United States declines. Today, the Canadian dollar is worth 74 U.S. Kids may not like it, but it may save their lives. A new way of giving the polio vaccine is being recommended by federal health officials. The new method consists of two injections and two oral dosages. Polio affected up to 20,000 people each year until the 1950s. Today, there are 8 to 10 cases reported in the world each year. The current type of vaccine is a live virus vaccine. Although the oral procedure is still being used, health officials say they hope the new method will completely wipe out polio. Two Grand Forks barbers have been cutting hair together for 34 years. The campus barbers own Tom and Jerry's Barbershop at UND's Memorial Union. Tom Dryberg and Jerry Pakshavinsky go beyond being business partners. They are also friends. Aside from the eight hours a day they spend with one another at the shop, they also enjoy hunting and fishing together. <laughs> we get along pretty well. As well as we expected working together for that long. You know, like we said before, we probably see ourselves more than our wives, so. Although Tom and Jerry enjoy their jobs, their daily rituals have become routine. Go to the barbershop. Three. 
You come here about 4 30. Tom and Jerry's day begins as they put money in the till, get their paper and coffee, and start working. The barbering duo agree that the best part of their job is the variety of people they meet. I like, I like it when you meet a lot of young people, working with young people. As when we first started out, we were pretty young ourselves. But. Jerry says the bad part about the job is they lose the friendships they've developed as students graduate. Tom and Jerry's barbershop is about more than just getting a haircut. It's about friendship, advice, and good conversation. Tom and Jerry describe themselves as being psychologists, barbers, and bartenders because they give as much advice as they can. Some customers are more interested in conversation than in getting a haircut. I'll tell you, that was some trot across the campus faster than the speeding boat. <laughs> also, I come here to uh, improve my education. See, I catch up on the local news, I catch up on uh, sports uh, scores, and uh, we get a little philosophy thrown in, too. Tom and Jerry plan on being in the barber business for another four or five years. They both have large families and would like to devote more time to their children and grandchildren. This is Julie Benson for Studio One News. Tom and Jerry's work experience also comes in handy at home. They cut hair for their wives, their kids, and their grandkids. And that's the news for this half hour. Scott and Stephanie? Thanks, Lucy. I bet those guys have a lot of stories to tell. I've yeah. heard a lot of stories. Yeah, I'm sure they have heard quite a few in their days. Now it's time to go to Patrick Griesgraber at the Regional Weather Information Center. Patrick, are the snow showers going to quit? Well, actually, we have some uh, light snow showers being reported out Grand Forks, but right now they're pretty much scattered, uh, being reported across uh, most of North Dakota this morning. So it's gonna, conditions are going to improve over the weekend, which is a good sign. Let's take a look at the current conditions here in Grand Forks this morning. Again, there's a light snow shower being reported out at Mark Andrews. Temperature 18 degrees, dew point 13, relative humidity 80%, and the winds are out of the northwest, 14 gusting to 28. Wind chill is ranging between negative 6 and negative 19 degrees this morning. As you can see, temperatures have been greatly affected by the super low pressure center that moved through the northern part of the Midwest. Five degrees at Minot, one at Rapid City, and we're seeing temperatures out into the east, 22 at Des Moines, 25 at Minneapolis, so a little bit warmer in the eastern ends of the region. As we pull out and take a look at what's happening nationwide, this is the area of low pressure that moved through our area this week, and that's what dumped about three inches of snow across Grand Forks, as much as six inches on the ground this morning at Minot. Still seeing some scattered flurries uh, being reported across the state this morning, and uh, most of the significant snowfall is being reported across the Great Lakes. Here's the forecast as we push it ahead about 12 hours. The system continues to travel up towards the northeast. All the snow flurry activity is still reported, uh, will be reported across Ontario for uh, today. High pressure moving in from the west, starting to clear off skies across North Dakota, so we'll start to dry off a little bit. We're starting to look at this system start to dwindle off in the west. High pressure moving across the central portions of the country, clearing skies off across the Midwest, so we'll start to get a little bit of drying and some warmer temperatures at least. Here are those temperatures for today. Temperatures are mainly going to be into the mid-20s across much of the region. 30s starting to make their way into the southwestern portions of South Dakota. Teens starting to drop down through Canada. But uh, the difference comes in for tonight. We're going to see uh, single-digit lows for most of eastern North Dakota, northern parts of Minnesota, and uh, the teens across uh, the eastern sections of Minnesota. Here's your forecast for today. Mostly cloudy skies this morning. Decreasing clouds, and then we'll start to go partly sunny by later on this afternoon. Winds northwesterly between 10 and 20 miles per hour, expecting a high today of 23 degrees. Tonight, here's the difference. Mostly clear skies and unseasonably cold. Our normal low is about 27. We'll get down to about 9 tonight. Winds southwest between 5 and 10 miles per hour. And for the Grand Forks specific extended outlook, Saturday through Monday, our high temperature will start to make it back up into the mid-30s where it should be, and our low down to 19, and we'll have a chance of some light snow flurries quite possibly Monday afternoon. That's the weather for this half hour. Back to you, Scott and Stephanie. Thanks, Patrick. Well, it looks like it'll be a pretty cold weekend. <laughs> cold and cold <laughs> and even colder. Yeah. So, uh, big weekend in sports. Josh Morton now joins us to take a look at some of the highlights with college football. Josh? That's right, Scott. It is Bison Sioux Week, one of the oldest rivalries in Division II, a division that crowns its champion on the field, not through the polls. Division I still trying to figure that one out. Florida State ticked off at being dropped to number two in this week's poll, playing some Thursday night ACC ball in Virginia. The Knolls bound to drop further in the polls after this. Tiki Barber, Tiki Barber took it to FSU all night, gaining 311 all-purpose yards. This one for 64 and the touch. But with four seconds left, FSU does have a chance. On the Cavaliers, six, down 33-28. The snap to work done comes up inches short. Cavs hand the Seminoles their first ACC loss ever. 
to the ice where their champ is decided in head-to-head -head competition. Kings and Rangers, Eric Lacroix gets two goals on the night and the great one ties it with this one. The slow roller off the faceoff. Kings win 5-3. In the NBA, they also do it on the court. It's called the finals and Charlotte wants to be there. But trade rumors buzzing around the Hornets camp. Alonzo Mourning in a tip with management. He missed Wednesday's practice and requested a separate flight to the team's opener tonight in Chicago. Sources close to the Hornets say a trade may be inevitable. That's a look at the national highlights. Now here's a look at the overnight scores. Well, contrary to popular belief, there are other sports going on at UND this weekend. Some pretty important ones, in fact. They may not be playing for the nickel, but the Fighting Sioux men's and women's cross-country teams host the NCC and North Central Regional Meet in Grand Forks on Saturday at Ray Richards Golf Course. The women, ranked 11th in the country, are led by sophomore Kim Oland. The men's squad is unranked but looking for a strong showing at their home meet. Women begin at 11.30 Saturday morning, and the men take off at 12.45. Scott and Stephanie, make sure you bundle up if you go to that football game tomorrow. Bundle up wherever you go tomorrow, <laughs> that's for sure. Exactly. <laughs> Still ahead today on Studio One, a story about a man who replenishes the life of several people by giving blood. But first we're going to talk to Charlotte Lewis. She's going to show us a fantastic way of capturing the beauty of fall leaves. Ten minutes now past the hour, Studio One continues after this. We want to hear what you have to say about Studio One. Contact us on the Internet. Our email address is udstudio at badlands.nodac.edu. Let us know what you think about our show. Or better yet, give us your story and guest idea of who you'd like to see on Studio One. Insurance. Unfortunately, it costs. Fortunately, it pays. Voller Insurance. Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. You know, ever since I got Community Nationals Imaging, I've had a great idea for a game show. From your bank statements, who can find check number 1144? Here it is. Jack's Hardware Store, September 15th, 1995 for $39. Who is the only bank to offer this incredible imaging service? Uh, uh, my bank? Wrong. Bill? Community National Bank, of course. Exciting place to go. Something's there for everyone, and you can see it all. You're free to choose a million things, so meet me at the mall. Meet me at Columbia the shredded natural cheese comes from Sargento of Wisconsin. And pick your insurance company. As your agent and broker, that's our exact job. We think we do it well and have been since 1947. Voller Insurance. Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. You're watching Studio One. News, weather, sports, and entertainment. If you've ever been driving along in your car and thinking about how beautiful the fall leaves look, we might have a solution on how to make them last longer. A Grand Forks woman takes these fall leaves and turns them into art. Charlotte Lewis joins us today to show us how more creativity goes into her projects than you would actually think. Charlotte, thanks for joining us today. It's fun to be here. <laughs> well, we got to show people right away one of the great pictures that you have here. Now, this one is about a sailboat, and people can actually see, you know, what we're about to be demonstrating for you and everything. Now, this is about a sailboat. So, tell us how you actually got started with this project. Well, I got I got started doing this at all in just a very a very crude way, making 
making cards and taping them on, taping leaves and flower petals on. They were awful, but it was a way of sharing some of the colors of Michigan where I came from with relatives I had out here and friends mm -hmm. who were shut in. Now, you, know, you do this a, a special way. You collect the leaves. Do you collect them all at once, or how do you collect them? Oh, bit by bit when they're in season. Like in the sailboat picture, those are made from August lily leaves. Mm -hmm. And you can collect them any time of year, but they're nicer in the fall when they start to turn a little yellow. The sailboat picture was made entirely from August lily leaves. I press the leaves in books or in paper, any kind of non-shiny paper. I put them under bricks. And I don't use them for several months. They, they go through at least until the next spring. And I'm using some that are years old. Mm -hmm. I have quite a collection. They're all over the place. You can hardly walk through my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, let's look at this other picture that you have here. Now, this one is a very detailed uh, picture. And it shows all the different types and different colors of leaves that you actually had. Tell us about this and how, how long it, it took you to do it. I, I can't remember exactly because I don't have the continuous time to work on it for for a whole lot of time. Also, if I did have, it would, it would drive me crazy after a while. I mean, it's very <laughs> detailed. It, it's very fussy, but it's very fascinating. This one probably, I'm sorry, this one probably took uh, several weeks to complete. Mm -hmm. But what's uh, amazing is when people think about leaf art, they think there's just going to be leaves on on a piece of art, but right. you actually cut them out to fit yes. the different people. How did you ever come up with that? I, I, that was very easy. A, a former music student of mine came and saw what I was doing in its crude state, and he, uh, I was using little pieces of ferns to look like trees and various things that looked like insects, and he said, I want to see you cut your own. He was an artist. I hadn't seen him for a year. I want to see you cut your own. And don't don't keep using the, uh, things that look like things. And I said, Oh, I could never do that. But I kept trying, and I did. And a lot of people have been commenting about this. You know, your art is placed up all over the place in the community, and each one sort of tells a story. Can you tell us what this story is about? Yes, the the, the piece is called "Who Remembers That Old Song?" Probably. Not many people are as old as I am, and they don't remember it. But there was a song called, Be Careful, It's My Heart. Uh, years ago, I hadn't thought about it or heard it for years. I woke up one, one morning singing it out of a sound sleep, and I decided this means something. So out of that came all, all the hearts that are there, being pushed around in wheelbarrows, being loaded on the backs of trucks, being crushed under a car. So that, that's, this is sort of a fanciful picture. Mm -hmm. it, is, is it tough to, to create these, to come up with the ideas? Sometimes, sometimes it is, and some ideas don't work, but it, it gets very fascinating. It's, it's sort of a cop-out way of, of writing, writing a story. It's for me, I mean, it really develops, and I really get into it. Pretty soon, all the characters have names. Mm -hmm. Do people, do you sell your art to people? Yes, I do. I have sold a lot. I've, I've sold it to... Through at the Winnipeg Folk Festival, through the Handmade Village, and at Winter Thing and Summer Thing here, and uh, oh, various places. Various a places. lot, a lot in Michigan, some in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. It's I've sold a lot of it. So your work is all over the country. <laughs> yeah, even one of the my first very simple pictures was bought to send to somebody in Germany. Wow, we just have a little bit of time left, but I want to tell about people about this. Spe specific one. Can you tell us about this? Yes, this is a this is kind of a cafe scene. Actually I got the idea from the student union one time there were a lot of high school kids swarming around there and then it developed into a kind of a fanciful scene. I've done others like this similar to this. That This is a the activity and all the kinds of people in a, in a restaurant and the way it, things people are looking the way people are looking, the things they might be talking about are very interesting. And, and all those early restaurant scenes were gone, so I decided to make another. <laughs> well, Charlotte, this is very wonderful, very detailed work, and we're glad you are on Studio One with us today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.
about 18 minutes now after the hour. And just ahead on Studio One, we'll look at the movie called Powder. It's about a young man who must overcome some obstacles because of the way he looks. But first, we'll meet a man who's making a difference to one specific individual in his community. He's not only giving his time, but also part of himself. His story is next. Make a memory, make a friend, make a fantasy come true in the end, make a dream to be remembered more than anything could see. Hi, I'm Nancy Schaefer. Make a child Please support the Make-A-Wish Foundation so we can continue to make dreams come true for these special children. I was looking for a car for three months and the folks at Honda Nissan knew I did TV commercials. And so they asked me for suggestions. And all I could tell them was how great I was treated at Honda Nissan. And the next thing you know, here I am. When I went to Honda Nissan, I was treated with such respect. And I really couldn't believe the quality and selection that I found there. People always tell me that you get what you pay for. But at Honda Nissan, you really do get what you pay for. Drown your campfires with water. Make sure it's totally wet. Then stir and drown again. We know we can count on you to do what Smokey says. Only you can prevent forest fires. Returning to the Red River Valley of Minnesota and North Dakota, Baron Von Red recalls his early barnstorming days. Baron Von Red especially remembers that fateful day when he fell in love with the wonderful Red River Valley red potatoes. But you don't have to go out of your way for great tasting potatoes. They're at your local supermarket right now. Proudly brought to you by the Red River Valley Potato Growers Association. Shortly after the recent school bus tragedy in Chicago, officials pleaded for immediate blood donations. While trauma cases offer the most visible evidence of the need for blood donors, many who suffer from other illnesses often take a back seat. But there's one unsung hero who refuses to ignore a very personal call for help. Studio One's Eric Dethridge shows us why Wayne Burlog is someone we want you to meet. Yeah, I mean, all you feel is just a little perk, and that's it. Painless and simple. That's how Wayne Burlog describes the process of giving blood at United Hospital's Dakmen Blood Bank. Twenty years ago, a friend prodded Wayne to give it a shot. Well, Wayne's donated ever since and always with a smile. But in 1991, tragedy struck another good friend of Wayne's. The man was diagnosed with leukemia, a form of cancer that eats away at white blood cells. To treat the cancer, a patient must replenish the white cells or platelets at the rate at which they are lost. Wayne felt he had to do something to help his friend. I'll say the cancer just kept eating away at it and uh, he needed uh, the white platelets more so than anything else. And it's something that I can do. So, I mean, uh, I just come in and through Dakman here, they just set it up. Ever since, Wayne's been stopping by the blood bank once or twice a week to collect the platelets for his ailing friend. The process takes about an hour and a half and starts when blood is drawn from one vein, then processed through a machine called a blood cell separator. There, the platelets are collected and the unused red cells are recycled back into Wayne's other vein. It may be a tedious process, but Wayne says helping his friend is a priceless reward. He introduces me to a lot of his friends as his blood brother because, I mean, that's, that's how we feel that we are. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's something that I can give to him and I, I really, I, it, it, comes from, it, it comes from the heart. His work comes from more than any place else. It's something that I can give and it, it don't cost anything. Wayne received some good news recently. Thanks to a bone marrow transplant, his friend's cancer is in remission. Undoubtedly, his blood brother, Wayne Burlog, had something to do with it, too. Overall, Wayne has donated blood 127 times here at Dakmen, and 45 of those times has been the platelet procedure. Holiday season is coming up in Grand Forks, and Wayne Burlog proves that giving the gift of life can make all the difference in the world. I'm Eric Detheridge, Studio One. 
And now to the movies with a fantasy and drama called Powder. It's about a young man who's been sheltered in his grandparents' cellar since birth. Eventually, he's sent off to school, and students don't know what to make of him because of his startling white skin. Ultimately, Powder has a profound effect on all who come in contact with him, and what he learns from them is to persist despite the distrust, hatred, and fear that his presence seems to generate. The good news comes when Powder's science teacher recognizes his tremendous compassion and intelligence. That's a clean kill right to the heart. He just couldn't see what he was doing, so I helped him. He lays his hand on the deer while it's still shaking, and then he touches me at the same time. He took whatever's in that deer, and he put it right in me. It's like I could feel that animal dying. Now, time to look at the events happening in your area. Professional hockey may be returning to Minnesota in the near future. With financial problems facing the Winnipeg Jets, a move seems unavoidable. Minnesota is rising to the top of the list of the places the team is likely to move. Here are your thoughts on the Jets moving to Minnesota and whether or not taxes should be used to raise money in order to bring the hockey team to the state. That is the Canadian or the, yeah, I guess the Canadian sport and Minnesota let their team go once already. Who's to say they're not going to let them go again? And tax money shouldn't be used for a private enterprise. I, I just don't think that something like that should uh, be put on the taxpayers. There's more important things, welfare reform, whatever else could be, that money could be spent on. Well, I think they should be moved there because uh, Minnesota has always been known as like a hockey state and everything. Uh, and I feel that when they don't have a hockey team, you know, it's, it's kind of bad for them. But I don't know if the taxpayers' money should be used for it. I'm really against the idea of any city, much less Minneapolis, paying taxes to bring a sports team in. I think we just all keep bidding each other up. Yeah, I believe they should go to Minnesota because uh, Minnesota is a big hockey state. And uh, in order to get anything in life, you have to uh, give a little. So I think they should be paying taxes. Do your feet ache when you come home at the end of the day? Well, there's a way you can decrease your foot pain and better your arch support by exercising your feet for just a few minutes out of the day. A person who has early deformities in their feet, such as hammer toes, can achieve straight toes by exercising them. Doctors add that picking up several marbles with your toes and dropping them in a cup can help strengthen the muscles that support the arches of our feet. And after a shower, sit down and scrunch a towel with your toes. Follow that up with a few sets of rubber band toe extensions and a series of foam rubber squeezes. It takes just a few weeks to snap into a routine, but just five minutes a day will do the trick. Orthopedic foot surgeon Dr. Carol Fry says foot fitness will follow within just two months. You have more muscle tone and better muscular coordination in your feet because you have better muscular development in your feet. And of course you're going to feel better balance, less toe cramps, less arch strain. Your performance will be better. Your health tip for the day. 27 minutes now after the hour and coming up in our next half hour in Studio One, Josie Nelson will join us to talk about her goal of making the 1996 Paralympic team. She's been working towards this goal for several years now. Plus, a look at what you can do to develop a good credit history. What you're doing today can affect more than you re may realize. That story plus news, weather and sports as Studio One continues. UND's Division of Continuing Education can help you learn throughout your lifetime. Begin or continue your education through correspondence study and learning after hours with classes on weekends and evenings. Or enhance your personal and professional development through conferences, management seminars, and specialized programs. Our goal is to provide quality programs and extend UND resources to you. For more information, call 777-4266 or 1-800-342-8230. Picasso painted the old guitarist during a period of depression that lasted four years, his blue period. Today, with new discoveries, 80% of depressive disorders are being successfully treated, giving hope to millions that maybe now nobody has to have a blue period. Ho, 
Oh, gee, I mean, you ask the students. The education that you get is as good as or better than what you can get at anywhere else. The teachers really go out of their way to help you outside of class. It's just an incredibly rich opportunity and environment here. Newman Outdoor Advertising, a site for more eyes. Outdoor advertising, it's bigger than life. It gives you flexibility. Use it as a constant reminder. Use it to advertise your message or product. Outdoor advertising, it's big, it's bold. Get your message across. Outdoor advertising, it works. For more information, call Bill Cassager in Fargo or Grand Forks. Now from the University of North Dakota, this is Studio One. Hello everyone and welcome back to Studio One. Nice to have you continuing to be with us. We're in winter. Yeah, winter is definitely here and it's time to get those winter survival kits together and in your car because you never know when you're traveling when a storm may hit. Especially just like this one that just crept up exactly. on us, that's for sure. Well, coming up in the next 30 minutes in Studio One, a special tribute to Robert Berthume, a Sioux football player who was unexpectedly killed in a car accident just before football practice started. Plus, an in-depth look on credit history. After our story, you may think twice about maxing out your credit cards. And we'll also meet a UND student who hopes to go for the gold at the Paralympics in Atlanta this summer. But first, national news from CNN and regional news from around the region with Lucy Sithcott. Lucy? Thanks, Scott. Some 15,000 people jammed New York's Times Square Thursday to rally against the Republican budget plan and its effect on health care. House Minority Leader Richard Gephardt told the crowd the proposed cuts of expected growth are extreme and mean. First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton said Congress doesn't need to cut Medicare and Medicaid to balance the budget. She said GOP budget cuts will deny basic health care to millions of children. This debate is about what kind of country we are, what kind of people we are, and what values we really do have. There are many people who claim to promote family values, but then propose policies that do not value families. We need to stand up for the value of all Americans. The Senate Special Committee on Aging is hearing testimony on Medicare and Medicaid fraud. Three felons testified Thursday about how they stole millions from the government health care programs. One witness said she billed Medicare up to $7 for surgical dressing that cost a penny. She served a 37-month term for masterminding a $7 million nursing home supply scam. Medicare and Medicaid may lose as much as $33 billion each year for fraud and abuse. There's a new product circulating that has attracted many people. People are catching on to using a debit card. A debit card is also known as a plastic check. The card looks exactly like a credit card, but the bill is immediately taken out of the checking account. This means no interest charge. But there is tremendous convenience in that if you've forgotten your checkbook or your spouse has it, uh, or you've run out of check blanks, or you're out of town at a place where they don't take out of town checks, this card will get you through that purchase and through that uncomfortable situation. Sandberg also says the debit card is accepted by 10 million merchants and more than 100,000 ATM locations. Sandberg predicts more people will be using the cards. He says once people learn how to use it, they realize the advantages. Babysitters beware. A Winnipeg company is making a tiny video camera that allows parents to spy on their babysitters. This could raise a privacy issue. But Brad Payne of Payne Investigative Services in Winnipeg says he sees no problems with the spy camera. He thinks people should have the right to know what goes on inside their homes. Attorneys in North Dakota say it is a difficult issue to deal with. They say it really depends on how and why the spy camera is used. People suffering from arthritis or injuries resulting from accidents have a place to turn to for treatment. Rusty Hinges is a program in Grand Forks that helps people get back on track. George Longmire is one of many Rusty Hinges, but don't let the sound of that throw you off. 
George has rheumatoid arthritis and joined a program to help exercise his tense joints. Rusty Hinges is a water resistance program similar to water aerobics, but at a lower impact, and George says it's working. It, my doctor says that he gives credit for 80% uh, of my uh, condition to water, 20% to medicine. I said, well, knock off your 80% then on your bill. <laughs> end, of, end of conversation. <laughs> George says he doesn't only benefit from the group physically, but socially as well. It's gotten to be just a good little social group as well as an exercise group. So we have a lot of fun and we have a lot of fine people in there. The class begins with some basic arm and leg movements and then gets into more resistance. An instructor guides them through, but they are encouraged to work at their own pace. I started about 12 years ago, coming four days a week, and I've hardly missed a time since then. And George says that even if his arthritis heals completely, he still wants to be a Rusty Hinge. The Rusty Hinges program is run through the YMCA but is held at the Rehabilitation Center. This is because the water in the rehab pool is 10 degrees warmer and makes it more comfortable for participants. Teaching kids healthy lifestyles should start at an early age. But giving kids a fun way to learn about healthy choices is not always easy. A New York-based company called Slim Good Body has found an interesting and fun way for kids to relate to being healthy. The shows cater to kids in kindergarten through sixth grade. The basic goal of the whole program is to um, teach kids mostly about how to maintain a healthy body, how your body works, how to keep your heart healthy, your lungs healthy, how to eat right, how to get lots of exercise. The program teaches kids good ideas of strong self-esteem, how to say no to risky situations, and how to say yes to good ones. Tom says his favorite part of the show is the participation from the kids and their parents. This is Tom's second year performing the show nationwide. That's the news for this half hour. Scott and Stephanie. Thanks, Lucy. He, he may look hilarious, but he's actually providing a really valuable message for the students. Yeah, it's a good, offer, I mean, a good opportunity for the kids to learn about their body and maybe help their parents learn about their bodies yeah. also. Yeah. Let's go now to Patrick Greasegraber at the Regional Weather Information Center. Patrick, are the temperatures going to stay cool? Yeah, it looks like we're going to stay pretty cool, especially tonight. We're going to see our low dip down to about 9 degrees, and the actual normal low is uh, significantly higher than that for this time of year. Temperatures right now are hovering uh, where they should be for uh, the second week of December, so we're looking at fairly abnormal and very low temperatures. Here are the current conditions here in Grand Forks this morning. Looking at light, no, light snow showers out at the airport. 17 degrees is our temp, dew point 12, relative humidity 80%. Winds now from the northwest 13, gusting to 22 miles per hour, and the wind chill between negative 5 and negative 16. Here's your forecast for today. Mostly cloudy skies this morning. Looking for decreasing clouds uh, later on this afternoon. Looking for winds between uh, 10 and 20 out of the northwest and a high of 23 degrees. For tonight, mostly clear skies and unseasonably cold. Our normal low is expected to be 27, but we'll get down to 9 winds southwest between 5 and 10. For the Grand Forks specific extended outlook, Saturday through Monday, we're looking for our high temperatures to start to rebound back to where they should be, right around 34 degrees. Our low getting down to 19, and uh, we're looking for a chance of light snow flurries on Monday afternoon here in Grand Forks. That's the uh, weather for this half hour. Back to you, Scott and Stephanie. Thanks, Patrick. I don't like to see wind chills in the forecast. <laughs> no, no, but uh, we're in the Dakotas and the upper Midwest, so we're going to have to live with it, that's yep. for sure. Well, a lot will be on the minds of the Sioux football players this weekend with the UND NDSU game. Josh Morton joins us now for sports. Josh? Thanks, Scott. The tragic loss of a life taken too soon. The 1995 University of North Dakota football season began on a horrible note when cornerback Robert Thume died in a car accident on his way to Grand Forks to begin his junior year of football. August 18, 1995, the day the Sioux were to start practice, but instead they were saying farewell to a teammate, to a friend. I seemed like we were just, I was dreaming almost. It didn't really seem like this should be happening. It was all too soon for Rob. You know, he's only 21 years old, going on 22. He had a good season last year, and everybody knew he was going to have a great season this year. Football was the furthest thing from anyone's mind those days in August, but UND had to go on, on to a season dedicated to a player who brought a lot to his team on and off the field. I think back to uh, you know, just recruiting him, and uh, he really liked his spirit. He was, uh, I think, a guy that thought he could do most anything. He was a very fun guy to be around, very energetic, uh, caring person. He loved his family a lot. I mean, maybe a lot of people didn't know that about him, but. He really took pride in his family, and he was just a great guy. On the field, Rob never backed down. 
despite his small size. I mean, he was one of those guys that uh, would go play corner and kind of say to the receiver, okay, buddy, it's you and me, let's go. And uh, uh, I thought he brought a real confidence and a, you, you guys take care of your business, I'm going to play my position over here. He brought that to the defense. And he's got Rob Berthiol of the Sioux, intercepted. You know, he always came up with the big plays. He had an interception against North Dakota State. He had some other interceptions in other games. He always came up with the big plays when we needed to, and then again, he was always a very emotional player for us. His play in last year's buys and wins makes this battle for the nickel even more special. The, the bigger the game, the bigger the battle, uh, the bigger the challenge. I, I, this was his kind of thing. It was like he and I played racquetball once, which I even said at the funeral, and uh, he had beaten all the rest of the guys, and I play racquetball, and he says, well, you're next, buddy, kind of like you're on the list. And <laughs> I think this game would have been on his list. <laughs> you, you sure appreciate things. Um, uh, because uh, the, the finality of it all, you know, you just, you don't think about that. And you just think of what a neat uh, time we have, you know, on earth. And as a coach, you just think of uh, how fun it is to be associated with young people. And uh, you don't want to waste a minute. More than 10,000 fans will pack Memorial Stadium on Saturday afternoon, but the Sioux's thoughts are with Rob, and they know he's keeping a close eye on a season dedicated to number 25. The oldest rivalry in Division II does kick off on Saturday when UND hosts NDSU. Scott and Stephanie have a feeling Rob will be looking down with a watchful eye. And a lot of people will definitely be remembering him during the game, that's for sure. 40 minutes now after the hour. Stay with us. Josie Nelson will join us to talk about training for the 1996 Paralympics. Plus a look at why you should avoid getting into deep debt. We'll give you tips on what can happen if your credit history is bad. That story is next on Studio One. Insurance. Unfortunately, it costs. Fortunately, it pays. Voller Insurance. Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. The University Bookstore at UND is open to everyone and invites you to make it your lifelong learning resource center. At the largest university bookstore in the Dakotas, you can choose from a wide selection of educational materials, imprinted clothing, and gift items. The trade department carries general interest books, reference materials, and educational software. Special orders and direct mailing services are available at the University Bookstore by calling 1-800-671-0948. Exciting place to go. Something's there for everyone, and you can see it all. You're free to choose a million things, so meet me at the mall. Meet me at Columbia. No matter what you have a taste for, Sargento Recipe Blends have a way to make it taste better. Four cheese Mexican and six cheese Italian from Sargento of Wisconsin. And pick your insurance company. As your agent and broker, that's our exact job. We think we do it well, and have been since 1947. Voller Insurance, Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. You're watching Studio One. News, weather, sports, and entertainment. Qualifying for credit is one thing, but maintaining good credit requires that you pay your bills on time and know what credit agencies think of you. Studio One's Bob Dunlop explains why you need to start today to avoid an embarrassing situation later. Buying things on credit, it's something today's society takes for granted. The fact is, you have to earn the right to use a credit card, and that right is established based on your credit history. But what if you don't have a credit history? Don't worry, credit companies want your business. Filling out a quick questionnaire with the basic financial information is all it takes. No better example of this exists than on the college campus, 
where full-time students are actively encouraged to apply. Bryce Oaks is one of those students. He's been taking full advantage of the credit card offers he's received. We play the hits. Don't have to. But, uh, right now I have five. I have uh, two MasterCards, a Visa, an American Express, and a Discover card. Bryce originally applied for a credit card to make sure he'd be covered in case of an emergency. Since then, he has been swamped with credit card applications in the mail from competitors offering cards with bigger and better benefits. The uh, Visa Gold card that I got in the mail, even though in the back it said must have a minimum of $40,000 household income. And uh, I don't have a household, let alone uh, household incomes. So, I don't know, kind of interesting how they, how they work that. When his student loan didn't come through, Bryce paid his tuition with his credit cards. Since then, he has been able to avoid making monthly payments by opening new accounts and transferring the balance from the old cards. This has given him as many as 10 cards and a credit limit that has reached $30,000. Bryce says he has it under control, but he does have some concerns. I still haven't gotten caught yet with getting in trouble with it, but I know it'd be really easy, you know, go to the mall or somewhere, see something you like, and all is paid off later, especially like vacations too, trips when I go on spring break, things like that. The fact that anyone can have credit problems worries industry professionals like Raynell Sorensen. She says the costs of bad credit are passed on to consumers by the creditors. We are in a trade organization called American Collectors Association, and according to them, last year in 1994, they listed $84.2 billion bad debt with collection agencies, and of that, $15.5 billion was recovered which means about an 18 percent recovery, uh, meaning that it costs all of us, every man, woman, and child in the United States, $269 extra cost every year for the bad debt expense that's incurred when others don't pay for things that they've used. Those who don't pay their bills on time run the risk of losing their good credit rating. Loan officers examine your credit rating in a variety of ways. The quickest and easiest way is the credit report. It contains current personal information and details all past and present credit accounts. Taking a look at this sample report, it shows the person has an account at J.C. Penney, the maximum limit is $2,000 on the account, the previous high total was $1,875, a minimum payment of $51 is required, and the balance is $922. In the last column, it shows the date of the last transaction as well as a 24-month history of the account. Each asterisk on the bottom represents a month. If the customer was late paying, a number between 2 and 9 would show. 2 represents 30 days late, with 9 meaning the account was closed. We only report what the credit grantor has on their system, so if they say you're 30 days late, your dispute is really with the credit grantor, not with the credit bureau, because we're just kind of a storehouse. We're just storing the, the clearinghouse of that information. Paying attention to your credit history is very important because it can affect more than just your ability to obtain a loan or a credit card. You can get turned down for insurance because the insurance companies are pulling credit reports. So you can be denied car insurance, you can be denied a job, you can be denied a place to live, and you can be denied a car loan and a mortgage loan. So it's, it's real important to uh, keep your credit report clean um, because it's, it's pretty important. You, could, you cannot get a lot of stuff by having a bad credit report. The three main credit bureaus that compile credit information and produce reports are Equifax, TransUnion, and TRW. They usually operate within collection offices, so consult the yellow pages for an office near you. Here's another tip from industry professionals. Check your credit report every two years to ensure the accuracy of the information. However, a more frequent check should be done if you move a lot or if you have a large number of financial interests. And finally, the best way to protect yourself is to pay your bills on time and most of all, spend less than you earn. And Bob Dunlop joins us for some follow-up information. In your story, you talked about checking your credit report for mistakes. What exactly, what type of mistakes should people look for? Yeah, what you generally want to look for is you want to verify the information and that, you know, verify your, your, the proper spellings of your name, your social security number. That's information that creditors uh, will rely on, so it has to be accurate. Also, you want to double check the accounts listed, and that's credit card accounts, 
uh, loan, uh, loan accounts, et cetera, things like that. Because um, these, you know, decisions about your rating are based on your credit report. So if there's any erroneous information, you want to make sure you get it before, uh, you know, decisions are made on your credit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An important topic that people mm -hmm. should not take lightly. That's right. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Up next on Studio One, Stephanie talks with Josie Nelson and her goal of going to the 96 Paralympics. So we If there's something you want to know about Studio One, write us, call us, or fax us. Our address is Box 7307, Grand Forks, North Dakota, 58202. If you want to call us, dial 701-777-4346, or fax your message to us at 701-777-4342. Gee, Vince, what kind of dummy wouldn't know how to use a child safety seat? Beats me, lads. Child's play. You just buckle him in. Unless he's over 20 pounds. Then this one's good. Except if he's over 40 pounds. Then you're into this kind of risk. What if he outgrows that? Put him in a booster seat? What if he's too big for a booster seat? Would he use a safety belt? The Auto Safety Hotline can tell you everything you need to know about keeping your child safe in a car. I'm a wreck. Totaled. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Call 1-800-424-9393. I was looking for a car for three months, and the folks at Honda Nissan knew I did TV commercials. And so they asked me for suggestions, and all I could tell them was how great I was treated at Honda Nissan. And the next thing you know, here I am. When I went to Honda Nissan, I was treated with such respect, and I really couldn't believe the quality and selection that I found there. People always tell me that you get what you pay for, but at Honda Nissan, you really do get what you pay for. When you put together quality faculty with quality programs, with superb students and all kinds of neat opportunities, you're going to get literally a world-class education. And that's what we can provide at the University of North Dakota. Coming here, you do meet a lot of people from different cultures, and it's really broadened my horizons a lot, it kept me more open-minded. I really like the professors here. They're always available. You can go in and talk to them whenever you need them. It really has everything to offer. You don't need to go far away to get a really good education anymore. Our next guest today is a very determined woman. She lost part of her leg in a farming accident at age five, but has gone against all odds and won. Today she's a Paralympic hopeful and a mentor for many people. Josie Nelson joins us to tell us about how her attitude is helping her meet her goals. Thanks for joining us today, Josie. Hi, it's nice to be here. How long have you been playing basketball? Um, well, I've been playing basketball for all my life, basically, you know, when I started really young. But I've been playing wheelchair basketball for about two years. How did you get involved with the wheelchair basketball? Um, for one of my classes that I'm taking, I'm majoring in therapeutic recreation. In one of the classes, we had to volunteer like with a disabled sports organization or some kind of organization in town. So I started volunteering with the wheelchair basketball team in town here, the Wallbangers, and it just kind of boosted from there. Wh who makes up the team, the Wallbangers? Um, it's a team of men from the area. Like Some of them are from Kirkston, some of them are from Grand Forks. Okay, great. Well, you brought some pictures along with you today. Right. Let's take a look at those and you can describe what each of them are. Okay. Here's the first one. What are you... Well, this is this picture was taken at the U.S. Olympic Training Center and that was this summer and I don't know if you can see it real well, but the Olympic weight training coach is laying in front of the team and we're all kind of flexing our muscles, <laughs> so... <laughs> and the next one? This is just me in my wheelchair um, shooting baskets at the Hislop. Okay, and I understand that, now here's the third one. Okay, um, this was at the national tournament which was held in Albuquerque this past spring. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm holding a Kachina doll, which is the trophy I received for the most improved player. Great, yeah. oh, super. How did you get involved with the national team? Um, well, each year they have tryouts at the national tournament. 
And what happens was this past year that we tried out and they selected 20 people for a developmental team. And then those people will train for the Paralympics. And this year the tournament's gonna be held in Albuquerque, the national tournament. And at that tournament they'll have tryouts and make a cut. And then 12 people will be selected for the Paralympics which will be held in Atlanta. How, do you, how did you get involved with the Paralympics through the national team? Yeah, through the national team. Well, I play with the Minnesota Timberwolves, which is a women's team based out of Minneapolis. And that's kind of how I got started with the women's basketball and the Paralympics. What type of training are you doing for the Paralympics? Um, it's a lot of like just work on your shooting, working out, pushing the chair, um, some weight lifting that sort of thing. Can you describe how wheelchair basketball is played? You have to dribble the ball while you're in the wheelchair? Right, you have to dribble the ball every two times you touch your wheels, otherwise you're traveling. Um, most of the rules are the same as stand-up basketball. We go by the NCAA w rules, and we have the three-point line and the free throws. Everything else is the same. There's just a few exceptions, like you get four seconds in the lane instead of three, and you know how I told you about the dribbling. Otherwise, it's all pretty much the same. When will you find out about the, if you make the team? Keep my fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, we have the tournament at the end of March, so I'll find out then okay. after the tryouts. Well, we wish you the best of luck, thank and thank you. you for joining us this morning. Thank you. 55 minutes now past the hour. Studio One will continue after this. From the University of North Dakota, you're watching Studio One. UND's Division of Continuing Education can help you learn throughout your lifetime. Begin or continue your education through correspondence study and learning after hours with classes on weekends and evenings. Or enhance your personal and professional development through conferences, management seminars, and specialized programs. Our goal is to provide quality programs and extend UND resources to you. For more information, call 777-4266 or 1-800-342-8230. Good afternoon, officer. My license and registration. Cheeseburger? It's hot out today, huh, officer? Maybe my tail lights out. Shouldn't or... you be carpooling? I guess you're right. I guess I am. Carpooling can save up to 600,000 gallons of gas a year. This message sponsored by Ad Council and EarthShare. Newman Outdoor Advertising, a site for more eyes. Outdoor advertising, it's bigger than life. It gives you flexibility. Use it as a constant reminder. Use it to advertise your message or product. Outdoor advertising, it's big, it's bold. Get your message across. Outdoor advertising, it works. For more information, call Bill Cassager in Fargo or Grand Forks. We'll be off next week because of Veterans Day, but we'll be back in two weeks, so we hope you join us then. And we're going to leave everyone with pictures of our first big blast of winter here in the upper Midwest. From all of us at Studio One, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in two weeks.